Oh, hi, Dr. Spine here. Ready for another twisted episode in our series. This time we're going to discuss scoliosis, which is a curvature of the spine. Now, we're going to start off by talking about the basic anatomy. I have here your spine, which uh, represents the bones and nerves that make up your spinal column and your own back. Now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the, the parts here. Got your pelvis in the bottom, the lumbar spine here, the thoracic spine, and the cervical spine. And the spine is made up with various segments, vertebral bodies and the discs that are in between. Your spinal cord is in here near the nerves, and the spine is held together with ligaments, which are connective tissue bands that connect with the vertebrae. Here's your spine in a straight position. It's maintained in a straight position with the erector spinae muscles that run up and down the back of the spine. There are a few normal curves of the spine. If you actually look at the spine from the side, you can see that there are a few normal curves. You can start off by looking at the lumbar spine coming off the pelvis and follow this VW bus down through the valley of the lumbar spine and then up over the normal kyphosis of the thoracic spine and then into a gentle curve through the cervical spine. Scoliosis is most commonly painless. People really don't even notice that they have it. But you can have back pain associated with it. And as it progresses, you can have problems with the ribs making contact with the pelvis. Uh, it can even limit breathing to some extent by uh, reducing the size of the chest cavity. When we're wondering about scoliosis, we, we look for patients that might have an unevenness in the height of their shoulders or their pelvis might be oblique. One part of the pelvis might be a little lower than the other. And when we suspect it, we make the diagnosis by doing an x-ray. After the diagnosis of scoliosis is made and we see a curvature of the spine, we prescribe range of motion exercises to keep the spine flexible by bending the spine from one side to another. And also, if the person has voluntary ability to contract their spinal muscles, we ask the therapist to train them in spinal exercises to maintain their flexibility and their strength to stabilize their spine. We follow patients over time with serial x-rays as often as once a year. If, the, if we notice that the spine is progressing with a worsening scoliosis, we consider positioning in a wheelchair, uh, seating to support the spine, uh, or a brace. If that doesn't work, we do sometimes consider spinal surgery, and spinal surgery would be a fusion. Now we look for a certain angle on the spine, and if you get to about 45 degrees in your major curve, and that is worsening, that's when we consider referral to a spinal surgeon for fusion. When a fusion is done, bars are placed along the spinal column. The bars are attached with wires or clamps to the bones, the individual vertebrae of the spinal column. And then bone from the pelvis is placed along the spinal column in order to produce a bony fusion. The rods that are along the spine hold the spine still, allow any injury to occur, and allow the bones to fuse solidly. Now it's interesting, in spinal cord injury, many of us have received a spinal fusion at the time of our original injury due to the fact we had structural damage to the spinal column and the spinal cord needed to be decompressed. Rods were placed and you had your healing then. But after a spinal cord injury, without a fusion, you do run the risk of a progressive scoliosis due to the imbalance in strength of the spinal musculature along the spine. If you think you have scoliosis, there's a few things that you should do. One is, you just look at your shoulders and your pelvis in the mirror to see if there's any asymmetry. The other might be is just to bring this up with your doctor. Your doctor is going to look at your shoulders and pelvis and then possibly have you bend forward and look at your back to see if the spine as it comes up to the closer to the skin shows kind of an S-shaped pattern. And finally, to confirm the diagnosis, an x-ray might be done with the x-rays coming through your chest and through your back 
to look at for the S-shaped curve that you would call scoliosis. Now there are another group of you out there are people that you really know that you do have scoliosis. And it might have been something that you had heard years ago. It's really a condition that needs to be followed as time goes on. The way to do it is to bring it up with your doctor, have your doctor look at your back, and consider an x-ray to compare it to x-rays from the past. If your scoliosis is stable, great. It can improve with strengthening. Uh, if it's not, then you want to prevent progression. A couple of things that you can do with preventing progression. One is extending your spine and, and looking at your posture, possibly getting some advice from a physical therapist. Active extension of the spine helps straighten the spine and progress, prevent the progression of scoliosis. Another thing that you can do if you're sitting is to get advice on seating. Proper back, firm back up to the wheelchair, and a good cushion can prevent progression of scoliosis. The final thing you should consider if you're sitting in a wheelchair with scoliosis is that you may have pelvic obliquity, where the pelvis is tipped from one side or another, pushing the ischial bones down. You want to have a good cushion to support you underneath so that you don't have a pressure ulcer on that ischial bone that might be pushed down. Well, there's a lot more to learn about the spine. I hope you keep watching. But for now, thank you. And remember, take care of yourself and your people. There's Dr. Spine saying farewell.